Right, so uh, what we are going to talk about today will be uh, um, the, the third week, third week topic. We're going to start talking about logic and how to program and all those good stuff. It's, uh, it is uh, the first time that you're going to get actually involved uh, with C syntax trying to implement lo logic. So essentially, we are going to talk about logic, style guidelines. I am completely going to ignore it. You're going to read it by yourself. And when tomorrow you're coming, you're going to have a full quiz on this, 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 and this. So you're going to have a quiz on four. This is your first quiz, right? No. Week one, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. So we had, so this is the second quiz. So you had the quiz zero that I asked you to give me your information. That's not a quiz. Uh, yeah. That's just the freebie thingy that I'm giving you. So, so we are going to talk, you see that the quiz, it's got to be a major quiz. It's got to be computers, information, compilers, types, simple calculation, expression, logic. These are the things that you're going to be on the quiz. Okay? Got a lot of studying to do tonight. Cell phones off. All right. I keep forgetting it myself that I can't tell students to, sh to, to turn your cell phones off. This time I remembered, so let's start. We're going to talk about logic and see how things uh, go. Um, if uh, It's a good idea for you before coming to class to go through the lecture and see, uh, try to uh, see if you have any problem, any parts and pieces, um, and then come over here, and then we'll continue with the, and when I talk about it, and then you'll see uh, the mistakes and the, the questions that come up. I'm going to go through this. In this piece that is talking about logic talks about all different types of logic, many different of doing the same thing. I'm not going to go that way, okay? I'm not going to show you many different ways of doing the same thing. For me, it's more important for you to understand the logic. So if there are three ways of doing the same thing, I'm just going to show you one way that is capable of all three. OK? So and uh, but of course, you're going to read that thing and answer back to me. So you're going to learn by yourself other ways of doing the thing that I talked about. OK? Again, we start by creating uh, uh, a Visual Studio project for today. And hopefully from now on, I'm not going to do that anymore. First few sessions, I'll do that. And then I'll actually prepare it and just open it up so I don't have to do this every time because you are doing it right now. Enjoying Visual Studio? Oh, yes, I am. OK. Not now. Anyways. So. Now that we are enjoying Visual Studio, let's uh, uh, create a, a project. So file, new, project. We can do that. But it, when you keep doing it over and over on your own computers, not school computers, school computers, every time you restart, which you should every time you finish your work, every time at school computers, when you're finished with your work, restart the computer. OK? Go down here, click over there, and then restart. Do it every single time. Okay, why? Because the software, the computers are designed so when it restarts, it puts the computer back in a previous state that it was in. Therefore, your files are not going to get exposed and uh, everything that you put over there are going to get deleted. So it's a good idea to do that. Anyways, but at, the, at home computers, when you keep doing that, it remembers your last selection. If you click over here, it's as if you're going through every single step, which is essentially file, new, project. And then in here, C++, Windows, Desktop, Windows, Desktop, Wizard. Make sure these two are both unchecked, then Browse. Then select the proper directory in which you want to create your things, which in my case, IPC 144, section STT, and select Folder. And then this is the third one. I'm going to put 03 dash, and then we'll continue with the rest of the stuff that is. September 17th. So that's going to be the name of the project that I have. I'll click OK. It creates the project. Make sure everything is unchecked and only empty project is checked. Depending on which builds of 
Uh, Visual Studio 2017 you are downloading when you are installing on your computers, you may see different faces of uh, this. So which means when you open this one, you may have more options, okay, than what you see over here. So when I say everything unchecked, I literally mean it. So if there are three more options, don't select them. Just select these and uh, be done with it. So, and after that, you click on OK, and three years later, you will see that a new project is created for you, ready to rock and roll. Now we want to add a new file in here. If I had already a file that I wanted to bring into this project, if you already have a file that you want to start up with, what you do, you right click on the name of the project, okay, name of the project within the Solution Explorer, and then you select Open Folder in File Explorer. Then you're going to have the folder in which you have the file that you, uh, the, the, the folder in which the project is created. Then move all the files in here so you have the files in the same folder. Don't add it from different places in your computer. It's not going to work out. Bring everything to the folder of this project and then you can right click on the project and say add existing item. Then select the items that you brought into this thing and it's going to add it to your project so you can work with it. All right. Our case is not like that because we are starting from scratch. I'm going to go add new item and I'm going to go prg.c extension of our files are C because we are writing C program and not C++. To prepare our page to write something, the very first thing I'm going to be writing will be, okay, that guy's too busy with his computer, so you're going to ask what do I write? What is the first line? Oh, that's good. That's okay. That's the second line, but I'll I'll, I'll get that. That's okay. So, uh, standard input output uh, that header file. I know uh, I I myself say studio, but please let's not do that. The correct thing I do that. I, it's it's, it's uh, something that I'm that that I've done since I was two years old. So I keep saying studio header file because I didn't know English and it sounded like studio. So that's why I said it. Okay, so it's standard input output that header file, okay? So, but before this, we have to do something. So our new compiler ignores the warnings about the old unsafe files. And that is the next person over there looking at his cell phone. Yeah. What do I write? Okay, good. So the lady beside us is going to say who's deep playing with her cell phone. Hello, cell phone. Yes. Okay, cell phones in your pockets now. Okay, I changed the rule. <laughs> okay, so what do we do over here? What is the first line that we write? I'll put you on spot when you come to my class. My apologies, I'm gonna keep doing that. So, if you if you don't know, you can say pass. Then I'm gonna go torture that guy. <laughs> is it a pass? Okay, so what do I write? What is the first thing I write? Huh? Pass. Oh no, not you. The gentleman in front of you. Yeah. Pass. You don't write CRT Siski Secure on your oh, screen. Thank you. So I write just define, is that correct? Hashtag. Ah, thank you very much. You are dealing with computer science. You have to mention every single stupid detail that you use every single time. Okay? Never say just CRT, smarty. So so we're gonna go define. So and the next person is gonna tell me what do we write? Estimate underline CRT. CRT? Secure? Yeah. Okay. Uh, underline no. Mm -hmm. Underline. <coughs> War? Warning. Warning. Is that correct? Uh, no. Uh, no. Warnings. Warnings. Thank you very much. Quite frankly, I didn't know what to write. I just, <laughs> you know, that's a good thing about being a teacher. I ask you guys. <laughs> if you know, if I don't remember. Yes. It has to be text. Yes. Okay. Uh, Case sensitivity is extremely important in C language. If it's caps, it's caps. It cannot change in any way. Nothing can be either capital or in C language. Everything is case sensitive. Everything is case sensitive. Are you okay? Even when it doesn't seem 
needed. For example, this PRG.C that I have written over here. You see that? Okay. You can, you can write capital PRG.C, right? And do everything you are doing over here. But then you take it to Linux, it's going to shoot you in a foot. Which means it has even the files have to be case sensitive because the programs that we are writing are platform independent, which means we can run the, write the program in one platform. Um, I didn't say what is a platform, but I'm going to anyway ask this gentleman over there. What do you think a platform is? That's when I say develop on a platform. Platform, maybe like a different operating system or different machine? Different machine, different operating system, and different. Um, what else? What is. What else is involved? Now my voice is not going to get recorded over there, but let me come over here. What else is involved when you're doing programming? It's machine, it's the operating system. Um, what do you want to do? When you want to compile a pro the compiler. Sorry, I gave you the answer. <laughs> so the compiler. The compiler is the next thing that is important, OK? So essentially, essentially, a platform is a combination of operating system and compiler together. Okay, these two together, so you can use on the same operating system, you can have two different compilers, and it's going to work differently. Okay? All right. I have to, let me pause the recording over here, because I want to put my angry voice on, and I don't want that to be recorded. So the combination of the operating system and the compiler together, I can have two operating one operating system with two different compilers and compile the, the, the program in two different ones and then I have to do certain things to make sure it runs in both. Okay, that's why we call it a, a platform independent program. Uh, therefore, um, yeah. So, back to the thing. So, secure no warnings, what it does, it simply makes your program compatible with the uh, unsafe functions that you have and the new compilers uh, always... Uh, uh, prevent you of using that. They give you warnings, stop compilation, and stuff like that. I write my uh, main, and main says return an integer to operating system, and I'm not going to get anything from operating system. That way it's void, and I always return zero to operating system, and that's an empty program that I have written, and I have no idea why it's highlighted over here. R is undefined. So don't trust the intelligence, okay, all the time, okay? Now, as you see, that she underlines my return and says, R is undefined. That's uh, probably if you save it, it's going to get okay. But don't always trust it. Save it, compile it, and make sure everything's good. What is IntelliSense? IntelliSense, it's an intelligence sensing thingy. When you are actually writing the code, it tries to see if you are having a mistake, and it helps you. So it underlines the things that it thinks you're going to get it uh, as an error when you're compiling. And also, it helps you complete the name of the variables and functions not to uh, uh, make a mistake when you're writing them. So we know how to read an integer variable. We have done it. We know how to write an integer variable. So we can actually get straight questions, OK, and we can answer them, OK? Uh, do a calculation, do something. So as long as there are not different types of choices that we have to make, then uh, uh, we can write a program. We can actually do uh, basic math calculations and give a result to whatever we want. Are we okay with this? Remember last time we have done written a program that added two numbers, right? So now we need to. Uh, learn how to make decisions. Decisions are made uh, based on logical values in your program. A logical value is a value that's either true or false. You know that. True or false. So what is false? Back over there with the hat and glasses. What is true in C language? What is false in C language? Uh, zero. zero. And what is true in C language? What is true? What is if I want to if I gave you a value, okay, how can you tell if it's true or false? We know if it's zero, it's false. So what it should be to be true? You can say pass if you don't. 
Anything that's not zero. Yeah, because people say one. I was expecting somebody to say one is true. It's not only one. 0 0.259 is true because it's not zero. The letter A is true because it's not zero. 32 is true because it's not zero. Coincidentally, one is true, okay, because it's not zero, all right? But when you get the result of truth or falsehood out of a calculation from C compiler, it's always one. Okay, so if you say if if you say if you write a is set to twelve greater than fourteen, is that a true value? No, it's false. So a becomes zero. Now, if I say eighteen greater than fourteen, then it's a true value. So a is not nothing but zero. A is definitely one. So when the result of a logical calculation is truth or falsehood, truth is always one. But when it's being examined by C for certain action that we're going to see soon, then anything but zero is true. Okay. So when C is testing to see if something is true or not, it only looks for falsehood. And if it's not false, it's true. Are we okay? All right. So, integer a, all right? Now, I'm going to write the statement with which you can decide if something is true or not true, all right? In English language, we say if, certain condition. If the weather is good, I'm going to go to picnic. Otherwise, I'll stay home. Everybody understands this expression, or it's difficult to understand? If a condition, I'll do something. Otherwise, I do something else. Sometimes that otherwise is not there. You don't know yet. You're going to say, if the weather is good, I'm going to go for a picnic. And that's it. There is no otherwise. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. OK? So these two things are very similar, see? OK? But instead of otherwise, because they don't want to type too long, C says else. So. If it's not raining, I'm going to go for a big picnic. Else, I'll stay at home. OK? Are we OK with this? So C does it like this. So if over here, good weather, go for picnic. Otherwise, stay home. And at the same time, maybe watch TV. And that's why we have those carry brackets. Because it's not always one thing that you do. Sometimes many things that you do, and you have to pack them in a thing. OK? That's what the first purpose of a curly bracket is. Curly bracket packs few statements together as one goal, one task. And that's what main is. If you look at it, to identify what is main, you have an open bracket and a curve, close bracket, close curly bracket, right? It means all the stuff inside that thing is what main do, OK? So if the condition over here is true, so if the condition is true, then if true, this happens. So uh, happens if true. Now, this happens if false. And you can have one or many things, OK? If it's only one thing, you can ignore that and only have one statement, but not in my class. In my class, all the statements must have curly brackets after, even if you have one statement. Why? Because it makes everything consistent. The thing that you write, look at that. That's ugly. The first part doesn't have anything. The second part do. I want to make it symmetric. I want everything to look the same. That's why even if it's one, I'll put it over there. Why? Because the sky is high. Why? Because I'm the boss now. Tomorrow, you're going to have another boss as if it's one statement. You are not allowed to put Gary Brown. Get used to it. Depending on which class, it's depending on which uh, company is working. you're working for, different types of things are happening. So let's take that and make it actually a program. 
So condition. I'm going to say if A is greater than 10, I'm going to say printf A is greater than 10. <laughs> 10. Okay. Okay. And otherwise or else printf a is less than 10. You okay? Are we okay with this? Yeah. Thank you. That's what I wanted to say. I wanted to say I wrote an example of a program, and that the first program that I have has a bug. Okay? So that's what I wanted to say when you caught me. 1% for the death. I'm learning about that. All right. So, so. So now in here, I'm going to put over here, I'm, I'm going to put over here A as 12. So what do I do right now to, what do I do to, what, can you read this thing in English to me? Sorry, number four. I know I push this, but my apologies. You can always put you in the spec. No, I should be able to do it. It's okay. just, I'm stuck in the way for a while. <laughs> okay. Um, A equals 12, the, the A is... A equals, I don't like it that much. What so do I say? A is the sign No. Set. No. Set two. No. Wasn't it? Initialize. Initialize 1% for the time. <laughs> okay, so, so that's the thing, okay? So remember that, okay? So remember that. You know what I'm going to do, actually? I'm going to create a bonus column on your, on your Blackboard thing, and I'm going to put those, these as one bonus. Mark, okay? You can use it anywhere you want. Whatever, whatever, anything other than final exam. Okay? Final exam is a legal document. You have to do it. I can't do anything with it. The rest is my discretion, right? So I'm going to create a bonus mark and I'm going to add these things to that remind me to do it and then you can accumulate and later on you can actually add them to your, uh, to whatever you have. Like you missed a workshop, you add that one bonus mark for your workshops. Okay? I think that's a good deal, huh? All right, initialize. We said assignment at the moment of creation is initialization. It's not setting to, it's not assigning to, it's not equal to. So I created, so the English thing is that integer a initialize to 12, or create an integer variable called a and initialize it to 12. Okay? Sorry. Yes. Why do you put explanation mark on after? Because I was very happy. I was like, ah, okay, that was it. That's in English. It's this is a mess. So in here I could say he ha the hoo hoo. Okay, but that doesn't make sense. If A is greater than then he ha the hoo hoo. Right? So I'm just so anything you put between those two double codes literally gets printed. Okay? And there is no syntax over there. You can write whatever you want. So first we're going to do here on the home, then we'll fix it, okay? So, so I'm going to, if I run this, now, of course, A is greater than 12, and it's going to say, he how the who who press any key to continue, right? Of course, I need it to go to new line, not to have press any key to continue over there. So I'm going to do it like this. There you go, right? And he how the who who, whatever that means, okay? But we don't want that, so I'm going to say A is greater than... 10. Now, exclamation mark and exclamation mark, okay? And we have one space over here, bad boy I am. Doesn't make any difference, it could have been printed, but it doesn't do anything, it just gets printed, it doesn't make sense that one goes in, it just doesn't look nice. Now, if A is 9, what I will get is A is less than 10, right? Which is correct. But if I have over here 10, what does it mean? A is less than 10. Whoops, I made a boo-boo. Okay, so, so I made a mistake, right? If my program has a bug, so if the value will never, the value of A never gets to 10, nobody will notice. My program works for 10 years, and after 10 years, somebody puts a 10 over there, and oops, the program doesn't work anymore. That's when you call you, you go over there, and you fix the bug that you have in your program. All right? 
So, how do we fix that? Yes. Add another else line where, oh no. The how can something have two else? Yeah, nice. Um, okay. Equal to, um, the oh, so you're saying greater than or equal? Okay, you just make the bug the other way. So now A is 10, and it says it's greater than 10. Actually, you already answered. <laughs> no. Yes. Else if. You studied. I don't like you. <laughs> <laughs> no, we could do else if, or if we play it the rookie way, we could always put another if statement where the decision is not final. So going back to where we were, just although this is above our head, but everything is recursive in C language, in, in any science step of thing. You have to, uh, I'll, I'll give you an example. Like, what, what is a tree exactly? A tree. A tree is a combination of small trees, right? Just break one branch and put it in the ground, and there's a smaller tree, right? And there's break another branch and put it there's another spot. So tree is a tree, just made up of itself, right? So whenever you you like you see that thing that I told you, if something like that, when I whenever you need to make a decision, you can put another if, just as is. So in here I had a bug, right? You can put an if statement right in there. So again, as I mentioned, whenever you are writing a program write the whole, the whole uh, structure and then fit it. So an if statement is if, condition, open curly bracket, close curly bracket, and an else, right? And now I can make the decision over here. So if, if A is greater than, it's going to print greater than 10, right? If it's not, I have to make a decision. If it's equal to zero, I have to say it's equal, otherwise I'd have to say it's less, right? So now I can over here say, if A is equal to 10, now I'm gonna say printf A is 10. I don't know why I'm surprised at the end of each sentence, but hey. And the other one, now I can for sure say that A is less than 10. You follow what I'm saying? And now, if this is not finished, you can put another if statement there again. Remember, that's the thing that you need to remember. Everything in, in, in C language is recursive. You can have anything in belly of anything, OK? Any, any logical structure, any programming structure inside another one, OK? That's what it is, OK? So that's way too early. Like nested stuff is something at the, we, we, that we're going to go much further. But you brought up the bug. Now, now if I run this program, I can, I will. So what happens is this. It runs the program. It comes to the first condition. Let me just make it in a way so we can see. Where is that? Oh, there we go. So properties. OK, so it runs the program. As you see, I'm running step by step using F10, uh, stepping over. So it, it comes over here. A is garbage, initializes it to 10. Now it says, is A greater than 10? The result is false. You can see that back there? That is a false over there. So the result is false. Therefore, this won't happen. It comes in here. So it comes to else. As soon as it comes to us, there is another decision to make. What is this decision? True. Because it's true, the first part of the if statement happens. That is 10. And then from here, it jumps right out of everything and goes out. Because they're all in the else statement. And A is 10. Are we OK with this? Now, to make this an interactive thing that we can actually uh, work with, what I can do over here, instead of initializing A to 10, I can actually say printf. Yeah, but <laughs> thank you very much. Enter a number, an integer, actually. 
Now in here, I'm going to say scanf. Somebody get ready. You're going to say what I wrote. OK. <laughs> Let me see who I can find. Uh, the gentleman with a baseball cap with a P on it. OK? So tell me, uh, can you read this in English for me? No. The gentleman beside it. Pass. Pass. The gentleman who has no table. I want that in English. Like, what does it do? What does that line do? Uh, so, it's going to uh, look for an input and then assign the input to your A. Okay, that's, that's, if you wanted to teach it, that's perfect. But the gentleman beside it's going to tell you, tell you what does it mean when I say read it in English. I mentioned the other day, I said, never say scan at percent E and percent A. Say what it means. And it means? Uh, it doesn't print anything. Scanf doesn't print anything. Scanf reads. It reads the identity of what is. And? 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 What does this mean? And A. Yeah, about the <laughs> What does it mean, my friend? Remember? Uh, address to the... You, you just said, but, but address? Address. Address of A. Thank you very much. Remember that. As I mentioned, always say it that way, not to forget what it does. And sadly you didn't, which is fine. But do it next time I'm going to do that. Actually, I'm going to put that in the quiz. How about that? Okay? So... Scan F percent E and percent A is set, scan an integer. You can say from did keyboard. Percentage? Pardon me? Did I, did I get percentage for percentage? No, because it took nine years until it got to you and people said after you. I am very intelligent when it comes to that. Anyways. <laughs> okay, so scan for, scan an integer and put it in F percent A. Yes. What if you want to do it by what you used to use the same thing? But instead of address, you're using a value, right? You can. You can? I cannot give you coffee and say put coffee in it. I have to give you a cup and tell you put coffee in it. Yeah. I don't give you a value for you to read. Yeah. I can't? Do you, you see what I mean? Yeah, it's uh, an action of reading. For action of reading, you need a place to put it in. No, but my question is, when is the time you're using a value instead of an address? When you want to print something. When you want, if I want to print A, then I would put the value. Okay, okay. But when I want to read, I have to give it a place to read it into. That's why it's an address. Okay? Perfect question. Thank you very much. I would like to give you a percent, but I will not. Yes? <laughs> How many people like this? Which one? I do scan. Um, scan? An integer. Scan an integer? Yes. And put it in address of A. Okay? Thank you. So if it was LF and it was something else, and we scan a double and put it in address of x, whatever, okay? So now I can actually read and test this thing to see if it works or not. So I can run this program, and running the program, I can actually decide what I do. Enter an integer, I put 34, it's going to say it's greater than 10. If I run it right now again, and I put over here 2, it's going to say it's less than 10. And if I go into 5, and I put over here 10, it's going to say it is 10. Okay, so this is essentially all you need to know to write an if statement. You don't need an else if. Else if is the other way of doing this. Go read it and find out how. Okay, but this, like this, you can make decisions in many ways as you want. You don't have to have any other way of doing it. Okay, this covers everything. Yes? How do you make a window statement? Oh, uh, one more time. How do I? How do you like make the window stay there? So when you run the program. Oh, you yours disappeared, right? Yeah. Because you press F five, correct? No, as in like when you input the number and then it says press. Any key to continue. It's. No, it disappears. No, it doesn't disappear actually. If I do like this and I put over here forty five, it waits for you. Yeah, and then when you press. Press enter, it goes away.
Oh, you want to have keep going? Yeah. Oh, that's the next topic we're going to go through. Okay. <laughs> All right. So you are saying, how can, I, how can I keep the program running until the user says I don't want to continue anymore? Yeah. Okay. Well, that's the whole program. Then I have to make this thing repeat itself. At the end of each one, I have to ask, would you like to continue? The user should say yes or no. And depending on that, I have to see you are, you're, you're, right now you asked me to improve your program. Okay, so if I wanted to, so this is the decision making thingy, but if you want, so zero, one. Uh, so I'm going to say if else dot C. Now, write a program is that welcome, I'm going to say printf welcome to Seneca. Bar and grill. <laughs> okay. All right. And then I'm gonna in here I'm gonna say. Uh, how old are you? And you're gonna answer. Now I'm gonna say if it's greater than or equal to 18. In here, I'm going to say, what? 19? Is it 19? It's 19 here. <laughs> it's 19. How did you know what I want to do? Maybe I wanted to ask them, go well, for a, go for a drive. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I want to hire a driver. <laughs> I want to hire somebody to drive to do deliveries for them. <laughs> <laughs> See, he thinks about drinking. Anyways, what uh, would you like to drink? Okay? Drink. All right. And sir. otherwise, hey. Sarah is your father. Yeah, what's up? Hey. We spelled drink wrong. Oh, that's a new version of That's drink version <laughs> 1.2. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so what would you like to drink? Okay, uh, that's EFL, English as fourth language. Okay, print up. <laughs> okay, okay, so so yeah, what would you like to drink? And in here, I'm gonna say, uh, get out of here. <laughs> Security. <laughs> huh? No, we are very gentle. We are Canadians. We never do all that. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah, I said you, we are Canadians. We don't do that. I had to make it gentle. Security, get him a Pepsi, right? So not to throw him out. All right. So that's that. So now we actually have a program that has a purpose that uses an if statement. So, so it actually tells you what to do. And then after that, it's going to say, how old are you? I'm going to say 54. And it's going to tell me, what would you like to drink? And if I run it again... Then it's going to say, how old are you? I'm going to say 13, and it's going to say, get out of here. Now, if I would say 10, I'm going to say, where is your mother, for heaven's sake? What are you doing in a bar and grill? Anyway, so you can do that, right? You can actually go to the thing and add to the options of, like, like if the person says 13, they're going to actually call, I don't know, 12, or something called child protective service. So, okay, so that's that. Are we okay with this? So, so now we have kind of a use for this thing. So how we know how if and out if else statements work, okay? And depending on what we are doing in our program, we might use it, all right? Um, the next thing is repetition. Now, people keep coming to the bar, right? I have to ask them one by one, as you said, right? Why do I have to keep closing the thing and run it again, okay? So I have to keep doing this while there are people in the queue, right? People in the lineup trying to come into the bar. It's not just, so let me just stop this. So that's zero, two. If, else, two dot C. So 
So for that, I'm going to come back to this. First, let's learn how does it work. Then we're going to apply this to that. OK? Are we OK with this? So we want to. So remember, what, what is our objective? I want to ask, next person, is anybody in the line? If they say yes, I want to keep repeating this over and over until nobody's in the line anymore. Right? That's what I want to do. But for that, I need to be able to repeat things. And to, to, be able, to want to be able to repeat things, I need to know how to actually make repetition, do repetition in C language. In C language, you repeat things while certain condition is either true or false. So essentially, you apply the English statement while there is more people in lineup while there is more people in lineup, ask, how old are you? And then keep doing that, right? So it's called a while statement. And how does a while statement work? It's exactly like an if statement, but the difference is that it keeps repeating. So I'm going to say while condition is true, do this. That's the statement for it. While condition is true, do this. So while condition is true, printf welcome to Seneca Bar and Grill. <laughs> right? Do we have such a thing at all? We have a bar. We have a bar? Yeah. Really? Thirty years uh, in Seneca. <laughs> They actually sell drinks? Yeah. Oh, for people on YouTube, please go. I don't know. Joke. But what? But, it's uh, open during only Fridays, I think, anyway. Oh, really? OK. Yeah. All right. Probably Anyways, shoot. I want to say everybody go out for a beer after this. But anyway, so. I'm down. So, <laughs> so yeah. So we want to do welcome to Seneca Bar and Grill thingy. So what condition is true. Now, what is true in C language, we said? Anything but zero, right? So I'm just going to put over here 1 and see what happens. If I put 1 over here, what does it mean? That means true. That means true. So, so it's always true, right? Never false. Then if you do that, this happens. <laughs> it's going to keep printing. OK? Because we said, while true, welcome to Seneca Bar and Grill. So it keeps saying that it will never stop until, like, if it was a real program, that's what we call your computer hanging, OK? So if it's a real now, because it's in an IDE in an operating system, I simply go over here and where's my mouse? And click over here and stop it, right? But if it was a real program, it would have hanged the computer. Because it's an endless loop with no data entry from outside. And there is no way for you to stop it unless you ask the operating system A to shut that thing down. Yes? But you said it would count zero. Yeah, but it never reaches to that. Oh. While this thing is running in the background, this is it. So it is in here. It never gets to the return zero thing. Yeah, if I had a return zero in it, then what would have happened if I had return zero in here? What would happen? I'm asking you. What would happen? If I had return zero on line six, right. what would have happened? Go back to the yeah, so essentially your loop would have never happened. It would just print welcome to Seneca Bar and Grill once and poof, return to, to our operating system, which is a huge bug. Remember, you are not allowed to have more than one return statement. This is not that you can't. You're not allowed to. Can you drive your car in a sidewalk? Yes, you can. But you shouldn't. You're not allowed to, right? It's the same thing. You're not allowed to have more than one return statement in a function. And it has to always be at the end. end. That's the rule you need to know. So for all those people who are going to soon write programs with several return statements in their function and their assignment we submitted, this is why, right? You shouldn't do that. Why? At this moment, because the sky is high. But later on, you're going to see that it's going to create confusion at the moment of debugging and creates what we call a spaghetti code. You know, have you tried to order follow a strain of spaghetti and see where it goes? That's not going to happen to be able to debug it. You don't want to do that. Are we okay with this? And by the way, this is still going. 
<laughs> okay? So let's stop it. Control C, and Control C is what tells the operating system, hey, stop. And I stopped it. All right? So now, how can I have, like, I just want to say this 10 times. How can I do that? What I can do is stop the recording.